Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you joined us today. We are going to be talking about autumn, the season that is upon us. I know it doesn't officially get here for another couple of weeks in mid to late September, but autumn officially or unofficially starts um, when Labor Day is over. So we're going to get started talking about autumn and how we can learn from the rituals and holidays associated with this season when we think about how to let go of things that no longer serve us in our lives today. Um, there's the big letting go at end of life. And then there's ways to prepare for that, ways to practice. And so we're going to talk about that today. So I'm going to share my screen in a moment. There's always a chance I'll be a little blurry after that. Um, so if I am, stick with us. We're still having a, an interesting conversation. Um, before I do that, though, I want to talk about these group sessions that we have. So the group session that I have right now with folks from all over the world join in to talk about autumn and the way that it helps us learn how to let go. Well, I'm going to make, I'm going to record the, my presentation, that part of this group session. And every group session kind of goes through that process. We talk a little bit about a topic, usually relating to death or dying or living with a life limiting illness. Um, and then we talk for about a half an hour or so with lots of questions and answers about really anything that the participants want to talk about. So I'm going to make the recording part of this group session available to the public. I want you all to benefit from this presentation um, and use it in whatever way works for you. The Dalai Lama often says, you know, take what works for you and disregard the rest. And so I want you to think about that when you're watching this session. And then I'm going to stop sharing my screen, stop the recording, and then allow the participants who are on this call today to open up, to share, to think about things. Um, and those of you who are watching can do that as well in the comments section, or you can reach out and get in touch with me. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to share my screen and the presentation part of this session so that everyone can kind of benefit from it and share their thoughts. Here we go. So again, today we're talking about how autumn teaches us to let go. I wanna encourage you to be present and be mindful during this session. I'm so grateful that thanks to technology, I can reach out and hear from people all over the world. Um, we can benefit from the knowledge and wisdom of so many other people who are on this call, but it can get distracting sometimes. So if you can put away your phone, turn it off, um, ignore emails for the next hour or so, and really be present while we're having this discussion. I also wanna encourage a judgment-free zone. There are lots of different cultures, religions, and backgrounds. Um, from the people who are watching and the people who are participating in this group session. So we're going to hold everyone in unconditional positive regard, and hopefully everyone will be able to feel comfortable and safe sharing their thoughts and ideas about these tender topics. Also, please mute your microphone if you haven't already. And then the Q&A after. Like I said, I will make this presentation and the recording available. But when we're done, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn the recording off so that the people on this call feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and ideas with just us. So what do you like about autumn? I would love to hear your thoughts. Think for a moment about this upcoming holiday season. The the things that come with autumn, what do you like the best about it? 
even if you're not an autumn person, if you're a summer person or you like winter best or spring best, that's fine. Is there anything that you do like about autumn? Please think about that for a moment. Just kind of center yourself for this conversation and concentrate on the things that you like, that you'll be looking forward to seeing, tasting, doing in the next three months. I have this picture on here because it's of uh, the commons in Boston. Boston is a place where I lived. I was um, born in the Northeast. And then when I was about 10, moved to Florida and that was it. Goodbye autumn. We didn't really, I didn't really see it for another decade or, or so. Um, and then I moved to Boston and in the 90s and spent four just beautiful years there and autumn came alive for me again and I moved back to Tampa to raise my children uh, and now I, I've spent the last year in Chicago I plan on staying here so I get the change of seasons again but when autumn first starts and the cooler airs and the changing of the leaves and the you know, hot apple cider all brings me back to New England and Boston. So that's what I like about autumn. Autumn really brings change. Our days get shorter, cooler temperature sometimes means bringing blankets, sweaters, longer pants out of storage. We trade iced tea for hot tea hot cocoa sometimes, and comfort foods like soup, stews, and pumpkin spice, all the things, right? Some of us also trade lazy days for a more structured routine, especially those of you who have young children or school-aged children. You're getting back in the swing of things, right? You're dropping kids off, picking them up, carting them to extracurricular activities, tutors, sporting events. Autumn also brings holidays like Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, we'll talk about some of them. And these holidays more often than not encourage inner reflection and gratitude. The leaves change colors and while they're changing colors, it reminds us that nothing gold can stay. Now letting go isn't easy. Sometimes I'll have clients ask me or tell me actually, I'm not ready to go. I'm not ready to die. I don't know that we're ever really ready to say goodbye. But that doesn't mean that we can't do it in a way that's meaningful and sometimes even joyful. While letting go isn't easy, it does take practice. And like anything worthwhile, it takes hard work. So let's think of some ways we can practice reflecting and letting go between now and November. So many rituals can help us do this in small ways, which not only makes our lives better, but it leads to a better death someday. And one of the ways we can do this is many of these holidays encourage us to do life reviews. Life review isn't something that only happens at end of life. It does happen then for sure. So many people at end of life will really just sit and reflect on their lives, the things they've done that they're proud of, the things they've done that they're not so proud of, the ways they've learned, helped others, the good times and the bad times, all of that is done at end of life. And if you've ever been around somebody who's gone through that, you might remember that they seem to be sitting quietly, just staring out of a window. 
they almost seem like they're withdrawn, but they're not. They're not just looking out of the window. That life review and coming to peace with the fact that that life is soon ending takes work. And that's what they're doing. There's a lot of work going on when, in that silence. So we can do it as well. We can do it now as we lead into autumn. We can sit and contemplate, but we can also write things down. We can write letters to our family members, our friends, our loved ones. We can do audio recordings about our life. We can also do video recordings of our life. We can write down our life reviews for ourselves. They don't have to be for anybody in particular. Um, we can write them in a journal or a diary. These are all ways that we can go through this. As long as it involves contemplation and reflection. And when we go into the holiday season, when we go into the autumn rituals that we're going to talk about, I like to remind everybody to do these three things. There are three things we I tell my clients when they're getting to end of life. Sometimes I tell my clients who are reducing their fears through meditation or psychedelics or other ways to do three things. And that is trust, trust the process, trust yourself, let go of attachments, expectations, and be open to whatever's supposed to happen to us. And I think if we trust, let go, and be open, we can get through almost anything. And so let's, let's let that guide us as we go into autumn and the different ways that we can learn from this beautiful season. So the first holiday I'll talk about is Rosh Hashanah. Now I'm Jewish, but I think it's important to say you know, the lens through which I am going to be talking about Jewish holidays, and really all of these holidays. So I was raised Irish Catholic. So I have a good handle on the religious aspects that guide Catholicism. And then as an adult, I converted to Judaism. And although I converted in a conservative synagogue, which is kind of liberal, um, not really conservative at all, um, but it, I am most comfortable in a reform setting. So very progressive ideas about Judaism and religion and spirituality. And so that's the lens that I'm gonna kind of be talking about these holidays from. Um, Rosh Hashanah marks the Jewish New Year. It typically commemorates the creation of the world and it begins the days of awe. That's a time for reflection. Some of the things we ask ourselves, some of the questions, how did we behave this past year? What did we do right? What did we do wrong? Religious services typically include blowing a special trumpet made from a ram's horn and festive celebrations that include apples and honey for a sweet new year. Tashlich is a ritual where we cast off our sins or misdeeds in different ways and vow to do better in the year ahead. Now, as somebody who's Jewish, I just wanna share some uh, more information about this since I can speak from a, from a personal point of view. Tashlik usually is to take breadcrumbs that represent those sins or misdeeds from the previous year. And we go, we gather down by you know, a river or a moving lake of water or body of water, and we cast them out. We throw the breadcrumbs into the water. Now, that's not necessarily the most eco-friendly thing to do, especially when we think about birds and fish that might eat that bread and not really need it. So some people switch it to seeds, um, fish food, other things that are more responsible. I would even suggest, you know, there are other ways to do this. First of all, we don't have to look at it as casting off sins. We can think about it as casting off just mistakes. And I often tell my children, mistakes aren't awful if 
One, we don't make the same ones over and over and over again. And two, we learn from them. They make us better. So we can still be sorry for them. We can still be sorry for the things that we've done, the mistakes that we've made. But maybe we can gather a bowl and put some water in that bowl and bring out some ice cubes and let those ice cubes represent our misdeeds from the previous year. We put them in the bowl of water and we watch them melt away. It's a good lesson because as we're casting off these misdeeds, we're not forgetting that our actions have consequences and we are sorry for them, but then we also let them go. We put them behind us, we learn from them and we move forward. I think there's something beautiful in that. Some people with their kids, they'll take, um, you know, like erasable chalk and, or just chalk in general and write them down, write the misdeeds down and then wash them away with the sprinkler or the hose. Inside, we can do that with you know, erasable markers, put them on a whiteboard and then erase them and move on. So there's lots of ways that we can reflect on our, on our last year, think about those misdeeds, those mistakes we've made, acknowledge them, learn from them, and then move on. Maulid is uh, a Muslim holiday that commemorates the birth of the Prophet Muhammad. This occasion is one of the most holy days in the Muslim calendar, and it is in autumn every year. It's often spent in prayer. Again, there's reflection. And there's also giving back to the community. It's a very real, tangible way to take any kind of reason, a holiday especially, to create some good work for people that need it in our community. So that is something that we can think about doing this autumn find the different ways we can give back, help those less fortunate in our community um, for any reason. And also there's the enjoying festivities with family and friends. That's an important component too. These holidays have joy, real joy associated with them. So let's not forget that. Diwali, for example, that's a Hindu celebration that lasts for about five days. It marks the start of a new year. Again, new beginnings, reflecting on who we were and then thinking about how that can inform who we become. Diwali traditions vary greatly from culture to culture, though many have one thing in common, lights. So decorating with lots of lights is important and you'll, you'll typically see spectacular light displays using lamps as part of Diwali celebrations. Yom Kippur um, is also a Jewish holiday, part of the Days of Awe or High Holy Days, where Jewish people atone for their sins. It's really important component to be truly sorry for the misdeeds, the way that we have hurt others. So Jews abstain from eating all day and they reflect on those misdeeds that they made the past year. And they're really asking God or the universe for forgiveness. But many Jewish people think that if you're gonna ask God for forgiveness, to forgive you, you should probably forgive others first. So they make meaningful amends, they forgive others before they seek forgiveness for themselves. So I know that, for example, in my family, we have a ritual where the night before Yom Kippur begins, the day before Yom Kippur begins. We say we're sorry to the people we're closest to. We say we're sorry for the things we've done and the things we haven't done that may have caused them a moment's pain, grief. We truly say we're sorry for this and we vow to do better. And usually the response is, I forgive you and I in turn am sorry for the things I've done or haven't done that have caused you harm. And so it's, it's a ritual where we forgive each other after we apologize to each other. We forgive ourselves too. 
And again, this doesn't have to be a Jewish ritual. We can do this all the time. Anybody can. I can tell you my Irish Catholic brother loves this holiday. He sometimes gets them mixed up and he calls me around Passover and says, is this the day where you apologize for everything you did wrong this last year? And I have to say no. That's Yom Kippur, remember? This is Passover. But regardless, that, that meaning behind it, anybody can do. And at end of life, we are, one of the things that people are tortured by is the need to say they're sorry for things. And if I could encourage you to think about that before end of life, you can have a much more joyful, meaningful experience without this hanging over you. So take advantage of autumn and take advantage of, of saying you're sorry to the people you love while you can. You don't have to be Jewish to do it. Halloween is a popular holiday coming up where kids and some grownups dress in fun costumes, scary costumes, um, whether it's to trick or treat or attend a party. But what this holiday does is it draws upon many traditions to celebrate the link between the world of the living and the world of the departed and take what's scary and turn it around so that maybe we won't be as scared of it moving forward. Dia de Muertos is very similar, like Halloween or Day of the Dead. It honors those who have gone before us. The holiday is typically celebrated on November 1st and 2nd, and it shares some similarities between the Catholic holidays, All Saints Day and All Souls Day. And it isn't a sad affair. That's important to understand. This holiday, which originated primarily in Mexico, celebrates those who have passed in ways that are joyful and full of humor. One typical tradition is to create an altar for your deceased relatives, friends, or even pets. An altar might include photos of those being remembered, as well as some of their favorite foods and other objects. So you don't have to be Mexican to do this. You can create maybe not an altar, maybe you want to create a bookshelf or a space in your home for somebody who has passed away who you loved and you want to remember. That's what this is about. Um, there are certain foods associated, particular with this holiday, like pan de muerto, which is dead bread. It's just a very sweet pastry, often shaped like skeletons. And if you've ever seen one of these celebrations, you'll recognize all the colors and the beautiful pictures and the vibrancy of the decorations. So bring this into your home and celebrate the people who have died in a way that keeps their memory very much alive. There's also Veterans Day. You know, originally celebrated as Armistice Day, Veterans Day falls on November 11th, and it's one of several that commemorates those who have served in the U.S. military. Many Americans observe a moment of silence at 2.11 p.m. Eastern time to remember veterans and find meaningful ways to thank them for their service. This can be as easy as picking up the phone and calling veterans in your life and thanking them. You can visit a veterans hospital and ask if they need any help from volunteers. Perhaps they need help feeding veterans in the cafeteria or maybe there's a common room where older veterans would love to sit down and talk to younger people about their memories, about their history. Maybe they'd even love just reading a book with somebody or talking about current events or playing a game of cards. Uh, there are lots of ways that we can celebrate veterans and practice gratitude and helping people feel good about themselves and giving back to our community in different ways. Another famous popular uh, autumn holiday is of course Thanksgiving day. This is a day for loved ones to come together, share good food and express gratitude in whatever way is meaningful. That's it. There are lots of different ways to do this. You don't need a turkey. 
You don't need to celebrate, you know, a colonial holiday if you don't want to. But it's nice to get together with loved ones and talk about what you're thankful for. So I encourage you to give that an, uh, a thought as we go into the autumn season. And also, let's not forget the autumn equinox. It's a moment in the year when the day and night are exactly equal. It's an event that occurs around September 22nd or 23rd in the Northern Hemisphere, and it marks the official beginning of fall, which lasts until the winter solstice. And we're going to talk about other ways we can celebrate that, but what holidays are we missing? I don't claim to have listed everything. I'm sure I must have missed something. So please, if you're on this call, when I when we go to the Q&A at the end, I'd love to hear if I've missed something so that I can add it to future sessions. And if you're watching this online, feel free to leave a comment about holidays that we're missing so that I can add them. And, and next sessions will be even better than this one. But let's think about less religious, more community-based rituals. Um, secular rituals that we can incorporate for ourselves this autumn season. We begin to take from fall one of our greatest lessons, and that's letting go. So the trees, leaves transition into beautiful colors and eventually begin to fall in preparation for winter. So if you have a regular meditation practice, or want to start one, consider going outside. You can take a walk or sit in a lovely spot that means something to you. And this is especially helpful if you do mindfulness meditation or loving kindness meditation. You can think about when and where your energy is going. And for lots of us, it goes to work, relationships, friendships, Really contemplate whether wherever your energy is going, is it serving you in ways you want or need? And if it isn't, how can you change those relationships or change where your energy goes or let them go altogether? While you're taking a moment for mindfulness, you're decluttering your mind and preparing for the art of letting go. It's a very simple way to begin. You just simply notice everything that's happening around you. Notice the beauty in the trees and the season of fall. Take a moment to admire the falling of the leaves and the changing of the air. As you watch the leaves fall to the ground, remind yourself that nature's cycles mirror our own lives. Open up space. This includes in your home as well. So go through your belongings. Give away what you aren't using. If it doesn't bring you joy, if you're not utilizing it, if you're not using it, maybe you don't need it. So. Donate it or recycle it. Or maybe you have a, a precious loved one who would love to have this gift that you're thinking of giving them. Do this re with relationships as well. Whatever doesn't bring you joy, consider letting it go. What did you accomplish this year that you're proud of? What do you want to say goodbye to? What do you want to complete before the year is over? Think about all these things. Decorate your home. Once Labor Day hits, I'm thrilled to bring out decorative towels, old, um, you know, arts and crafts that my children made when they were little. All these oranges, browns, and gold colors. 
flowers and wreaths with maple leaves, acorns and pine cones, pumpkins, pumpkin spice cookies and pumpkin spice lattes and pumpkin spice muffins and uh, pumpkin all the things. Apple cider or pumpkin candles. Part of what people love about seasonal change is the change. It reminds us of the importance of recognizing impermanence. Not all impermanence is sad. I mean, think about how happy we are sometimes to be done with the sweltering days of summer and finally feel a breeze, right? In some ways, the very nature of our impermanence is what makes life so precious. Would it be precious without that impermanence? Celebrate the harvest. Honor your connection with the earth by preparing a meal with seasonal ingredients. Get that nutmeg out, get squash out. Um, make these dinners, communal events, share with friends. Some people dedicate a Friday night to dinner and invite people over every Friday night. For some people, it's Sunday night, whatever it is. Sharing a meal with loved ones can be a beautiful way to enjoy the season. And if, it's, if you can do it outside, even better. Some other rituals might include making a playlist. There's autumn songs, right? There's September by Earth, Wind and Fire. There's also all the instrumental songs that are used for the It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown or the Thanksgiving Charlie Brown special. Come on, who doesn't hear that and think about leaves falling through the air? You can play spooky songs around Halloween. Uh, the possibilities are endless. Think about seasonal movies. Speaking of Halloween, you could devote all of October to scary movies um, and invite friends over and make special cocktails like you know, get that pumpkin head ale out and pumpkin infused vodka or apple cider mimosas or just apple cider and hot chai tea with some pumpkin spices in it. All of that can be meaningful and wonderful ways to spend time with the people we love. So much more. What are some ideas you have about meaningful rituals this time of year? If you're on this call, we'll, we'll go over those ideas during our Q&A. But if you're watching this video and you have some ideas about autumn rituals that mean a lot to you, please make sure you mention them in the comments and then we can all benefit from them. Really think about what no longer serves you. What can you stop carrying? Is it time to let go? What burdens can you release? These are all things I hope you'll contemplate and think about as we go into the autumn season. And most importantly, how do you want to grow? I want to share my contact information before we end. There's a lot of information, a lot of thoughts that come up when we do these talks and group sessions. So you might not have anything right now that you want to discuss or ask, but here's my phone number, here's my email address, and here's my social media handle. Don't hesitate to reach out, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, or into the future. There's always time to discuss this, and hopefully I'll be here to be able to answer your questions or hear your ideas. So don't hesitate to reach out. All right. I am going to stop sharing and open it up for questions. To everybody online who's watching, thank you so much for joining and have a wonderful, beautiful autumn season.